Hey problem solvers, welcome to Literacy. Today, I want us to talk about tackling hard, difficult, maybe even overwhelming texts. Because often, as nonfiction readers, excuse me, as nonfiction readers, we are going to run in to certain texts that don't come easy to us, that have words we don't recognize, that has fact overload, that has multiple different parts that we need to make sense of. And as nonfiction readers and researchers, we can't skip over those difficult texts. We need to tackle them head on. Now, before I get into how we're going to do that, I want to tell you a little story. Because whenever I think of difficult technical texts, I always think about the day where I got my bike. I ordered my bike online and it got delivered to me in a box in pieces. And I was like, you know, I'm no bike mechanic or anything, but it comes with, an, it, you know, it comes with instructions. So I should be able to do this, right? I'm a reader. I know I'll figure this out. I'll just read the instructions and I'll put together my bike. Let me tell you, it was not that easy. I started sorting out the different parts of my bike, the, the rods and the gears and the, the, the screws and all the different parts that I needed. I sat down and I tried to read this instruction booklet and oh boy, there were so many words that I didn't recognize. Um, and like even whole phrases that did not make any sense to me. And I got so frustrated. I was like, I am not a bike mechanic. I cannot make sense of this. This is going to be impossible. I should just give up. And I dropped the, um, the instruction booklet on top of this giant pile of bike parts and I walked away. So I was like, mm, not for me. But then after taking a couple breaths, I remembered that I am a reader and a skilled researcher, and I can tackle texts head on. Now, have you guys ever been in a situation like that? I feel like I'm not the only one. Can you think of a time where you've tried to read something and it just made you so frustrated because it made absolutely no sense? It happens a lot, you know, like texts of all different levels are just part of our lives. So what do we do? We do not skip over it. Nonfiction readers don't skip over the hard parts. We tackle them head on. What does that mean? Well, first, we want to tackle those big, unfamiliar words. And I don't know if you guys remember, I hope you do, a few weeks ago we had a lesson about how to tackle big words or unfamiliar words, and we looked at the root word, we looked at the suffix, we looked at the prefix, we took context clues from the paragraph around the unfamiliar word, so you can absolutely do that. If all that still, if after all that, it still doesn't make any sense, you may have, you might have to um, look up the meaning of the word, but we are all um, building our internet research skills, so I think you could all do that as well if you needed to. After the words make sense, you should be able to read the paragraph and make a little bit more sense of it, but the first time you read it, it might still be super confusing. Nonfiction readers will read and then reread every chunk of a technical difficult text. So after every paragraph or even every few sentences, you might need to pause. You might need to reread it. Then you ask yourself, what is this teaching me? Even those couple of sentences, what are those sentences teaching me? Now, um, in order to organize your thoughts and to remember things and retain all this information, nonfiction readers will often talk 
about what they're learning or write about what they're learning. I know that when I physically write something, not even type, when I physically write something down, it's much more likely to stick in my head. So do not be afraid of, to write about what you're learning. Let's take, an, let's take a look at an example um, of a more difficult text and see how we can tackle it. Whoop. All right. Whoa. This page has a lot on it. It's got a big diagram. It's got some big vocab words. It's got even more of information over here. It's got facts. It's got more um, vocab words. It's got paragraphs. It's got, no, too much. It's got too much. I don't think that page is worth reading because that just seems way too difficult. Nonfiction readers do not skip over difficult text. Let's tackle it head on. Take a breath, open it back up, take it one bit at a time. First, let's read the title of the page. A Hot Topic. Okay, so just from that and just from looking at the pictures, I pretty much know that we're going to learn about volcanoes, right? So what, uh, next I'm going to go right into this paragraph here. Um, because it seems like a lot of information is right in this paragraph. It might help me set up, help, might help me uh, set up my reading. So what goes on inside a steaming, brewing volcano? If you could look inside a volcano, you'd see something that looks like a long pipe called a conduit. It leads from inside the magma chamber under the crust up to a vent or opening at the top of a mountain. Some conduits have branches that shoot off to the side called fissures. Okay, right there, let's pause. We only read one paragraph and we've already learned so much. Now there's one word in here that I'm kind of unfamiliar with, conduit. But I can look in the paragraph and see that it's something that looks like a long pipe. And that some of them have branches that shoot off to the side. Okay, so... Um, I can pretty much picture what a conduit is. What else is this paragraph teaching me? It's teaching me what's inside a volcano. That first sentence asks the question, what goes on instead of inside a steaming, brewing volcano? So we learned that inside there's a conduit and branches that shoot off and those are called fissures. Cool. And then that allows us to go right down to these vocab words. And now I already know what this is. And I can look and see that it's pointing to the pipe like conduit. Um, and the fissures are the branches that go off of it. Beautiful. Now I want you guys to take a minute. I'm going to leave this up. And I want you to try. I want you to read one of these four squares. When you come back to Zoom, I want you to tell me um, what your paragraph was teaching you about. And if there were any unfamiliar words that you needed to find the answer, that you needed to find the meaning to. And I want you to tell me how you did that. Okay, so read any it can even be one of these pick one piece of this page one of these squares read it and be prepared to tell me what you learned when you come back i'll wait here and give you a few minutes to read it If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video right now. Take as much time as you need, and I'll see you on Zoom with your answer, okay?